Hello and welcome back once again to the Single Malt Review. I'm Tim and we've got Dave over here for another, and goodness me it's a full size, who ever saw mm. that one coming? We're off the mini train today, we've got, um, no I'm lying, there's plenty of minis, but uh, <laughs> this one, this one is mm. a big boy, so yep. what are we looking at? Back in Speyside, back at the Glenlivet, one of the all-time mm. classic distilleries, and what we have here is something a little bit on, on the down low. It yeah. is the illicit still 12 year old. So it's sort of, it's been a little bit 12, but not quite as we know it. Um, in fact, it's mostly as we know it, but with a few key key differences here, which I think are really rather positive. Um, the first one being is that it's a bit of a big boy in its strength. It's 48%, mm. which is pretty atypical for your Glenlivets. I think of the standard range, the 18 is the first to sport a non-40% ABV, mm. and that's only 43, memory serves, yeah. um, but no this one, 48% because it's unchill filtered. Mm -hmm. My goodness, they've gone and done it. They've released an unchill filtered Glenivet that's not the um, Nardura, which are their cask strength batched uh, releases. Um, they couldn't quite go over the line, they were so close to it, but no, they've coloured it. No. Boo! So close to a fully natural Glenlivet, which would have been really fascinating. But never mind, never mind, we can't poo-poo them too badly because they have provided us something which I think is um, more or less just a souped up version of the 12, mm -hmm. and that's a really, really good thing. So, um, despite this, uh, what, looking at it, is pretty rude amount of colouring in there, that's, um, <laughs> that's pretty full on, but anyway, mm -hmm. anyway, um, how this differs from normal Glenlivet 12 is or depending on how much you know the blend, I think it's either it's going to be minor or it's going to be major. So we'll see what you see what you think. So what actually makes it the illicit still? No, like what's, illicit what's stills. Uh, well, they're they're sort of harkening harkening back yeah. to the time long ago, before um, sort of the um, the legal age of distilling, when all of the stills um, across the Glenlivet, across the space side, um, were all illegal, illicit, mm -hmm. um, and it was Glenlivet themselves which. Uh, applied for the first granted, if I'm correct, the first license granted in that area, which made them monumentally unpopular with all the other stillers because they'd broken the seal at that point. Mm -hmm. the, um, they'd Sold given the, the yeah, they, the, they'd given the excise man a whiff of the mm -hmm. tax. They'd proven that the um, the strong arm tactics were worth it, mm -hmm. and the distilleries could be cowed, and uh, the other distilleries were furious, <laughs> so furious, in fact, that the um, said man excise man provided the um, proprietor at the time, who actually the name escapes me, but I'm going to just throw a stone and say his name was someone Grant because the, 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 you know, the bet's good, um, provided him with two pistols for self-defense um, of his own. That sounds extremely stressful, but it worked out for them in the end with Glenlivet being as uh, popular as it is today. Otherwise, it means nothing at all. <laughs> Right. So simply so, we've got a high proof yeah, take and one, um, yeah. unchilled filtered whiskey, yeah. similar to what we would add in the, the oldie days. Yes, mm. yes. And as far as the makeup of casks, mm. I think this is more or less, you know, bog standard what you get, which I, I think is good. I think a, um, I would rather have the standard recipe for 12 souped up mm. than them having to go and modify it for a different one so we don't get as fun a comparison between the two. Right. Mm. Mm. So, That's it. Quite a quite a rough um, sort of ah, what was it? Almost a bit of a little bit of acetony alcohol yeah, harshness on there. It's pretty big yeah. on those. Um, I think oh. it's whereas normal Glenlivet Twelve is really gentle on the mm. nose. I think the um, the elevation in strength, which is actually pretty big. Um, yeah. you, I'm not good enough with maths to do that in my head, but it's a not a not a small fraction. Mm. Um, taking a forty percent ABV all the way up to a 48, that's that's a quite a bit more whiskey in the bottle there, and quite a bit more fumes on the nose as we're discovering. So it's a, it's a big nose, but it's still pretty unmistakably both Speyside and pretty unmistakably Glenlivet, I think. Mm. It's really huge into the heather honey, huge into the white fruits, although they're a little more custardy now, which I think mm. comes from, I think that custardy oiliness comes from the lack of chill filtration. So that's where I think it's starting to diverge from the normal the normal flavour. Yeah, those are, I'm getting those um, nuances now, but they're quite well hidden by that mm. initial rush of harshness. And I think you might get a little bit of a similar thing on the palate. Ooh, no, I like it's, that. That's yeah. immediately turned quite sweet, quite creamy. It's real punchy mm. and yeah, creamy. Yeah. Which is what we've seen time and again from the releases that have gotten the unchill filtered mm. treatment, or ones that were unchill filtered all along. Creaminess and sort of a 
like a sweet pastry quality seems to live in the mm. oils that get removed from chill filtration. Yeah, like a fruity custard tart with the rich buttery pastry. Mm. And oh, that's good. I like it. Yeah, there's like this wax. Mm. Um, yeah, lots of crusty, buttery, puff pastry in there. Mm. There's a few, not a great many, but there is some sort of honey roasted nuts Ooh. coming through there. The the sort of super fruity, super space sided blend of it, I think. Um, it will be revealed uh, once I once I do this, which is the obvious the obvious move for an unchill filtered stronger blend of it. It's the old two whiskies in one, because that immediately, boom, coming straight out of that custard. Now the fruit are now Ooh. the fruit are just there. Mangoes, the fruit are just passion fruit, evident. Been. Yeah. Mm. That sort of oily pastry, oily stuff has now fallen away, not completely, but significantly, and those fruit are just laid bare, and mm. they are super fruity. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's got much more uh, delicate, but also more citrusy on the tongue. Yeah. Getting it's... lemon, lemon cream biscuits. Mm. Lemon cream biscuits, that's yeah. outstanding. It's been maybe 20 years since I've had a lemon cream biscuit, but the, it's such an evocative flavor. Yeah. Um, it's, it's brought it right back. And no, I get it for about maybe a packet per year on your yeah. lemon creams. Love them. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a real piece of nostalgia. Man. That's, that's <sighs> activated bits of my brain that haven't been around since um, primary school. I don't know. Uh, good grief. But no, that, mm. that, is there, that is there in spades. Yeah. There's um, tinned peaches. Tinned oh, peaches in yeah. heavy syrup, if you remember that. Can we even get them anymore? I don't know. I think that was banned by our government. <laughs> it's light syrup or juice now. Mm. But, yeah, seriously in there. And the finish is way, way longer mm. than normal uh, Glendibbit. Glendibbit, um, it's normally, it's not there and it's gone, but it's a pretty short finish as far as mm. most whiskies go. It sort of quite rapidly skates off the end of the palate yeah. and leaves you... Um, wanting more, which is a good thing, but this this you can ponder on for a wee mm. bit longer. This one's got quite a lot going on. Mm. And a good balance, I think, of uh, mostly bourbon with just a wee bit of sherry, which mm. I think is, you know, like I said, it's, that's the normal recipe for the 12, so I'm glad they stuck with that. And we're only just seeing it now, but you can see, yes, that is genuinely unchill filtered. We are now finally getting a bit of a bloom in the bottle there, so that's good to see no fibs on that one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's on balance, I think it's just, it's the 12 only better. Um, it's a really, really positive move. It's also priced really well. Um, it's a little bit dearer than the 12, but not nearly as much as you might imagine for With a... 20% more alcohol yeah, per, volume, um, per bottle. That's so a, it's, yeah. at the moment anyway, until they figure it out, um, it's really good buying, yeah. um, over on our end anyway, so it's, it's a, ticks all the boxes um, for mm. me. It's really, um, I've never hated Glenavon, it's mm. never really been my favourite though, just because it's a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit gentle, you know, it's a bit pedestrian, but this one, this is a whiskey for me, They've, mm. they have, they have um, found the end for me on this I one. haven't bought a Glenavon in a long time, but I'm sorely tempted. Mm. So, I think, um, a really good turnaround from the distillery there. First, yep. first they um, withdrew the 12 from some territories and the, the dark times fell upon mm -hmm. it. Um, but from bringing back the 12 to then bringing back this extra good version of it, I think they're good stuff from, yes. the, from the people over there at um, Blair Living. And scores, mm. scores of this one. Well, I'm going to go in and go in high. This is a 90 pointer for me. Yeah. It does things so well, whether it's at its bottle strength or uh, with an addition of some water to open things up. It is great to see a high proof and non dual filter blend of it. Mm -hmm. Really lets the inherent properties yeah. shine. And that's that's exactly what I'd say. Ninety was what I had brewing in um, on the buds here as well. So, who would have thought? You know, it's simple maths when you uh, to make a whiskey better, mm. put more in. I suppose. Yeah, less dilution, less filtration. Yeah. Less is very much more this time. Yeah. So uh, tremendous. Um, mm. More in the right way, less in the right way, and with their powers combined, a superior bottling. Yeah. So long may that continue. I want to see now. Now that they've gotten my interest, they might they might rue the day now. But I'd like to see similar treatment on the 15 and the mm. 18. I think that would be mega fascinating. Single cask and cast strength or bust. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Good. Good. Excellent. Thank you, Glenn Abbott. Going in the right direction at last. All right. Cheers, Slanger. We will be right back with something else. I don't even know. Something else?